RIP. Dum bum. Okay. We're doing it halfway. You gotta finish. I light myself on fire yet? What is going on, my lovely, lovely people? This is part two of a two part episode of AP 18 of Wreck Bike Rebuild. My buddy Brian is behind me. He is the mechanic genius behind making this bike actually run properly. If you're watching this video, you've probably seen episode 18, part one. In this episode, Brian and I's goal is to do all the finishing touches, except for the fairings. You are not gonna get to see the fairings on this episode. You will have to wait for the reveal in episode 19. Suck it, nerds. Me and Brian got a lot of little tedious shit to do. I ain't gonna talk about the Patreon page. You know what the Patreon page is. You know what Rec Bike Rebuild is. Me and Brian about to do this work. You see my hand. Okay, cool. I, I thought I saw you look away and I'm like, damn it, he's gonna look away and not see my hand and there's just gonna be this awkward situation of like, where's my high five? Uh, last week, we left you guys hanging because we couldn't do a lot of shit uh, because I didn't have a torque wrench that could go between five and 100 foot pounds. So, grab this little mechanical beauty on Amazon uh, turns out we're probably gonna use Brian's though, because Brian has a much more, what would you use to call yours? Like a more advanced tool. Uh, honestly, I just think it's gonna be a little bit more efficient, a little bit easier, so we don't have to keep switching bits constantly. Yeah, so mine has a really large head yeah, thing. Half, half inch. Half inch, yeah. And mine's uh, a three eighths. His is a three eighths, and his can angle and stuff, and if you guys don't know, we gotta get like into there. Probably gonna be using his, but now I have a torque wrench that'll work. So, we're gonna get to work, okay. Let's start with torquing the exhaust down and get it completed. Gotcha. Then we can put, rehang the radiator and drain it mm -hmm. and what's left of the engine oil, flush the radiator. We can retorque the steering head bearings and then torque all of the pinch bolts for the for the triple trees, which we needed to oh, do, Oh yeah, correct? you can show that uh, little tool that you brought. Mm -hmm. Did we get to torque these? No, the forks are another right. part of the torquing of process. That we could not do. So. Everything we needed to torque last week was between that 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 range. That range so it's like the pinch bolts down here. Yep. And the pinch bolts here, and the pinch bolts here and here, and then all of the exhaust hardware. You know, there's a lot of shit to do. Let's pick something and finish it off. Okay. And then we'll go to the next thing and finish it off. And today's not about jumping around. It's about getting it done, start to finish. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go to the exhaust and work our way from there. Then sounds good to me. Um, this is my Snap-on Tech wrench that I bought years and years ago. Uh, I have it calibrated every other year. And then this is the uh, the torque wrench that Chase purchased on Amazon. You can see they're fairly similar, except mine has a, a 3 8 anvil and his is a half inch anvil. And when you're torquing stuff that's down around five foot pounds, then uh, you're going to be using much smaller sockets, so you'd need to put a converter on and then possibly a converter on top of converter and then things start to get a little loosey-goosey. So we're just going to stick with this one for now. We have this one uh, when we need it. Based on this screen, looks like we need 15 foot-pounds. So guys, these are the bolts that we have to torque down to 15 newton meters. New meters Wait, foot pounds. foot pounds. Shit, don't listen to me, Brian. 15 foot pounds. I know for a fact that I said newton meters because it sounded more scientific. Yeah, 15 foot pounds, these guys. So the nice thing about this torque wrench also is that it vibrates and beeps. Oh, shit. So if you're working in a noisy shop um, and you really can't hear the little slight beep that this thing makes, it vibrates in your hand so you know that That's cool as it's shit. at torque as well. So. You're like the Rec Bike Rebuild doctor, where you have your little, your, your doctor My case. My bag. And you know that if Brian brings the doctor bag, then... Shit's going down? Yeah. Okay, if I was gonna get Snap-on to sponsor this garage and be like, hey, replace all my tools with Snap-on tools. You're talking at least 50 grand. Go! Well, maybe not quite, because you don't have quite that many tools. So let's say 30 grand. Depends if you get a toolbox, too. 
So Snap-on, if you guys want to replace all the tools, we'll put a big like, we'll put Snap-on somewhere in the wall. Put it on the next bike. Yeah, we'll put it on the next bike. So Snap-on, shoot, shoot your boy an email. Brian will show me how to use all the stuff, I promise. Brian's like, if this son of a bitch gets a shit ton of Snap-on tools. Well, it works for me too, because I get to use it. Yeah, good point, see? You mm -hmm. know, I get to come to this garage and use nothing but Snap-on, would be pretty sweet. There you go, you see? Know, this is the secondary, I mean, most of my stuff at work is Snap-on anyway, so it'd be like, you know. It would feel more like at home if you had. It would feel more like at work. Well. Because at, at home I have cheap tools. Get the springs on. Yeah, the springs are going to be interesting. And I don't mean that in a good way. I'm putting my face shield on because I've got this feeling that and we're going to have I'm gonna get hit in the face. flying everywhere. The exhaust has these little hooks that you have to, like, attach. They're extremely strong. Brian's probably going to make it look way easier, but I will not do such a thing. I wish I could make this look easy, but I know it's not going to be. All right, my strategy is go from the top, then use my strength to bring it down. Okay, literally pulling my chair. Yes! Well, at least there's only four. Oh, there's only one per thing. Yeah. Okay, so we're, all right. Uh, all right. Uh. Woo! Yeah, maybe I grabbed their good springs or something. <laughs> Like I literally, I just can't even get it over the edge of the... We got all the springs attached. You can see those are the two on my side. Brian's two over here. I was gonna redo mine, but the uh, springs in the middle seem to not sit as like tight in there as the ones on the outside, but it's done. Does that mean exhaust is totally done? Exhaust is totally done. Killing it, Graves ready to go. All right, you want to torque down the forks? We need to do the steering head because we're going to take the top triple off. Oh, you guys got to check out the uh, cool tool Brian has. So we're going to take the tr top triple tree off so we can get these things tightened down, but check all this stuff out. Now, what's this called again? It's an adjustable spanner wrench. Adjustable spanner wrench. That thing looks fancy as hell. It's actually super duper simple piece of stamp steel. Or that. Now look at that, how nice and tight we had that set. Oh! Oh, that was so loose I thought it was the wrong size bolt. I don't know. Steering stem bearings have a slightly different torquing procedure where you want to tighten everything real tight first Yeah. to make sure that everything is pressed into place Yeah. and you take the tension off and you lightly torque it back down because now that everything's compressed in place, now you just want to keep it from moving around. So you still want the steering to be smooth and as easy as it could be without being too loose and notchy. using a torque wrench on something like this, you can't just put it here and measure your torque. Okay. Because it'll be incorrect because you have to measure from the center point. So how do the hell do you okay. calibrate for that? So there's two different ways to do it. The first one is, is there is a, a an equation that will set up moving the center of gravity from here to here. Okay. And then you do your math and then it tells you how much to set your torque wrench at so you get a correct reading out here. I have a feeling you have a different way than that. The other way to do it is to set your torque wrench at 90 degrees mm -hmm. to the pivot point. 
Okay. So now is your turn. You're still getting proper torque. So that is the other side of the math. Somebody had to figure out that it had to be 90 degrees. Gotcha. But once you do, once you figure that one out once. Yeah. It's fairly simple. Just getting started, already sweating over nothing. <laughs> over one fing nut. Again, super tight. Alright, at least we got up the spec that time. Oh, now we got the top one? Now we gotta loosen it and then retighten it. Oh, f you're not loosening to spec there, right? You're just generally I'm gonna loosen. loosen it and then re-tighten it to spec. Why the f does this thing not want to loosen? Made the director show, Brian finally got it, and it was a giant pain in the ass. Sweating bullets over here. We need a little like shop guy to like grab a rag and like your work easy. Yeah, he's not gonna dry off my crack though. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, maybe you could bring your own friend. I don't know. So what's the deal with the little metal piece in between these right, guys? It's a, it's a lock ring. Oh, and you just like, so bend it down or something? four tabs on it. Yeah. Two tabs get bent down, and two tabs get bent up. Oh, so it locks both of the top and bottom together then? Yes, it does. Gotcha. Okay, no spec for the lock. We just have to get it so they touch, and then line up, and then we can bend the tabs. There's a difference, it beeps and continually beeps faster until it's solid. Oh, so the solid beep is the one that- Is this spec. Oh, I was wondering why you were going what seemed like much farther past the spec. Because you could, uh, it reads it. Yeah. Right, so you torque it, it beeps, you take a look at the screen, and it tells you where you were at. Gotcha. pain in the ass at all was oh it? Oh my god. <laughs> hey, maybe that was our like pain in the ass point today. And now everything else would be not a pain in the ass point. Thank you for being optimistic. Yep. That's what I'm here for. Because we're probably gonna need it today. Optimism. Woo. -hoo. Okay. Uh front's done. Woo. High five. Nice job. Alright, so uh, everything in the front end is torqued to proper spec. Well we did the exhaust and the front end. Now we can hang we the did. radiator. Okay. Uh, and we can drain the system flush it with water and then refill and then from there i guess we can start doing brakes 
Yeah, we got that radiator guard too. Oh, okay, yeah. So we should probably start with the rear, being that we have to remove the banjo bolt to put the pressure the pressure switch, switch in. Yep. Uh, and then we still have to mount the rear wheel ABS sensor. Yep. And then run the wires for it back to their home. Uh, and then fresh crush washers on the uh, banjo bolt for the rear brake caliper. And then uh, we could start bleeding brake systems. Ooh, radiator time. So, uh, as far as modifications go, we have a radiator guard. Now, in all honesty, the reason I got a radiator guard was because it's black and it's going to match the bike better. This is what a radiator guard looks like. Brian, what's the benefits of having a radiator guard? Uh, it's just to keep some uh, road debris from coming up and puncturing your radiator. Oh, okay. So it has a purpose other than making this ugly silver thing black. Yes. Anyway, Brian, well, <laughs> so we got this piece of shit on there now. Do we put the black thing on now? Uh, yeah, now would be a good time to put the radiator guard on, I'm sure, before all the body work goes on. Yeah, that sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah. All right, we're going to check out this radiator guard. It looks oh, pretty cool. I was going to say, hopefully it's one of those fancy ones that you just put on with zip ties. A fancy one you'd put on with zip ties? Is that is I've, that a real thing? I've seen radiator guards where they have like little hangers on them and you just hang them on the top and slide it down and then four zip ties go on it to make sure it doesn't fall off. No shit. And that's it, that's all you wrote. One of these days we're gonna have to get you a real knife chase. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Can y'all even see Brian through the I through so. the mesh? <laughs> You're so funny. Oh look at you can't he's blurred out R and G. What? There's Brian. Brian, do you want the instructions? I think I'll be good. You know what, Chase? I'm gonna let you get all scraped up putting this thing on. Oh, fuck. We do have these things, so. What are these things? Little rubber protector -y things. Oh, I wonder where they want you to put those. I'm betting this goes on the actual radiator. Uh, it's possible. Is it perfect? No, this is strictly just little, little big giant hunk so I'm thinking water. like right here on the edges maybe how many of them are there there are two because the way this thing fits is it kind of fits in between those pieces well shit see what I mean you don't worry I have instructions <laughs> don't you blast you see these house? photos how many fucking photocopy images is that hundreds what a piece of yo look how piece of shit this is RNG I expect better Look at that. Who the f can see that? Oh, don't worry. It continues. I say we just slap this bitch on. I'm good at looking at shitty directional photos. Maybe I can figure it out. <laughs> All right. I don't see where this little foamy thing is going. So. Cool. No foamy thing needed. So I'm going to go ahead and take that guy out. Yep. <laughs> Those posts that stick up that uh, yours is on the pin and mine is on the bolt head side. Oh, I see. How the hell do they expect you to get this thing around that? I'm gonna, uh, show, this... I'm gonna show you. Oh, I thought you were gonna say, I'm gonna make you do it. So okay. what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put like three or four bends in this so it's almost a loop. And it'll keep its and bend? As you work it in, there'll be enough of the bend that should be able to stick out so you can grab it and pull it out. Oh, shit. Right, so we just, you know, first bend and second bend. And third bend. Work it like that. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay. Hold on. Oh, they can't focus. Boom. Now right. that it's like this, let's see if we can get a little light in here so I can see what I'm doing. All right, let's stick this through one hole. We got more zip ties. Always. Did they, how many did they give us? 
So they gave us two, but don't worry, Brian. Just enough to screw one up and not be able to put your radiator guard on. That is interesting that they would give you two. It's like, hey, good luck being perfect. The camera wasn't on. Brian over time to zip tie. Now he's got to redo it, but he's now, he's now a, a trained professional. Before I give you this, let me... Too thick. <laughs> That's what she said. No, she didn't. <laughs> Dude, there's a pair of, of wire cutters in here. I was looking for those. <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna make such a mess right now. <laughs> there you go, Brian, just use one of those. Just don't pay attention to me right now. <laughs> done with that already. Oh, you're already done? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. Are you just going to get the hand camera to... Yeah, yeah, I was about to go over there and start getting real close-up shots of you, and then you're like, oh. So guys, first thing I'm going to do, bend the zip tie. <laughs> yep, now we got to bend it again to get a little, a little U-turn. How big are you making these folds? Are they like an inch a piece? Don't worry about that, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to be judged. Look at that, look at that look. Wait a minute, you just say you're not here to be judged? Yeah. And, and you, you're putting this on YouTube? I don't put it on YouTube to give me the flashlight, Brian. Over here trying to judge me, knowing these people gonna judge me enough. <laughs> right. Success. We did it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so tighten your side up. Woo! Damn. All right, radiator guard, check. All right, radiator guard. Now we're gonna drain it so we can have it be draining while we do the brakes. Correct. You remember long ago when I borrowed this from Heather? She gave it to me permanently. It was a wedding gift. I would hope so, because what the f are you put in this? It was, it was a first anniversary gift. <laughs> this is like th Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, it's I like don't. The turkey, the mashed potatoes, the candied yams, the whatever your vegetable is, and then on top you just put a whole container full of gravy and snap the lid on. You're like, yeah, being being a guy that likes to cook, I don't know what I would say if it would fit into there. Like, it would have to be like a giant thing of broth or something. All right, would you be so kind as to remove the radiator cap? Yes, sir. Uh, Fairly can. Ready for radio cap? Radi radiator cappage? Okay, radio cap, radiator cap off. While Brian is removing that and uh, doing that thing, what we're doing is getting all of the coolant out of the bike because I've got a shit ton of engine ice that we're going to be putting in it. So we're trying to clear the system out right now. Right, that's uh, engine ice usually doesn't uh, mix very well with anything else. Also, blue engine ice plus green coolant, that makes brown. We ain't filling this bike full of shit. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm on cleanup duty. I got water everywhere. I'm gonna make good use of these RNG directions. Do it to it, man. You wanna see what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm probably not. Oh God, I got Brian's metal wet. No! Don't worry, Brian, it's distilled water. Are you using the paper to block? Yes. As like a shield? Yes. That's genius. My God, what is, oh Jesus. Well, I guess that's not working. It's yeah, yeah, it's a fucking terrible decision, Brian. What the f is happening? There we go, I just let it go. Oh, now I gotta pee. <laughs> I'll take one of those blue towels that's fairly dry. Looks like that, just pull at your own discretion. Cause I gotta stick my hand in this bucket and grab the bolt that I dropped in there. Here, save your skin. Oh, it's alright. My hands are already covered. Brian, no! Oh my God, Brian! Damn it! 
You're gonna get cancerous cells into your hand. We literally have an unlimited supply of gloves and towels. Brian sticks his fucking hand in the cold. That's what it is. I'm leaving you guys on this side. Watch, Brian. Make sure he doesn't put his hand in shit he's not supposed to. Look, the water's clear. All right, so... For you guys that have no flush coolant, you literally put the water in the bike and keep doing that until that material is actually looking like water and not like that. We flushed it, was this the third time now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so three times for us. We've got the coolant looking clear, or the water clear. So, we're good now. We're gonna take a five minute piss break. Got it. Especially after all of the liquids after, that after are- After all that, I had to piss myself. I'm pretty, pretty proud. So uh, guys, I thought I had ordered plenty of crush washers. I thought you did too. Yeah, we both are pretty sure they're somewhere in this garage. We just don't know where. There's um, a, uh, there a crush there's washer a, fairy. Yeah, that, that takes all kind of crush washers. A stash of them someplace right now. Luckily, uh, we ran down the road, went to Advanced Auto Parts, and they literally had two. We needed two. Whatever. We're lucky. Call it a day. Now, we move on to the brakes. Now that we have freaking crush washers. We're removing this oh. <laughs> banjo bolt. Yep. To install the brake pressure switch. That is needed for the Woodcraft brakes. Because these are for race use only. No, they're for street use. Because they're for race use only, they do not have a spot to attach a brake light switch. So this is kind of the only reliable way of doing it. So we have our new replacement banjo bolt that's going to fit right in that hole. And then this wire is going to run up and into the harness and plug in. And it comes with two new rubberized banjo bolts. These have like little rubber seals in them. Yeah, but animals can't tell us, so. They can when they haul the fuck ass out the way because they just heard a goddamn tree fall. <laughs> Trying to hold the camera steady here, Brian. You're, you're making it a little more difficult. <laughs> as long as you don't hum that very accurately, we're fine. Actually, I kind of want this. This is episode two. So, like, I hope that you get us, like, copyright <laughs> strike. <laughs> Fucking Mission Impossible humming. We may have to uh, do some soldering, sir. Hmm. Now we need to find the old brake light switch. Which is probably in that bucket of shit that we're not going to use anymore. Speaking of things we're gonna use again. There you go. <laughs> All right, brake light switch. Okay, so we're gonna cut the new thing, solder it to the old thing, and then we got plug and play. Yes. Success is my only mother freaking option. Failure's not. Good teamwork, Brian. 
That worked well. Good job, Chase. Okay, so this is the ABS. Okay. And this is the fuel pump. Um, that comes out of the gas tank. tank. Got it. So fuel pump and fuel level sender. Gotcha. So now we need to get the ABS sensor on the rear wheel. Correct. And that banjo bolt too. Let me grab that bolt. So if I understand things correctly, that is our ABS thing. So for those who couldn't see it because you were on the other side, I had to run the ABS pickup wire and the brake line through the rear fender. So guys, this was the ABS pickup right here. Yeah, I think all that stuff looks on. Pretty sure this is all around the right way. I don't have to take it off anymore, so I'm going to crush the crush washers. All right, initiate the crushing of the crush washers. Crush wash is crush. Gotta say I'm pretty happy with that rear fender and that exhaust tip. Yeah, the carbon is very similar actually. Yeah, that's what I was noticing while I was watching you. Like the the pattern in that guy matches very well with the pattern there. So I guess that uh, rubber thing just kind of hides in there snugly underneath that. Yeah, just snugs in. Yeah, well, there's two more bolts to hold this on. That'll be on and in place and we don't have to worry about that. Tells you. Yes, ratchet keeps going into forward by itself. You know what we need, Brian? Better ratchets? Snap-on ratchets. Oh, poor Chase, if you only knew. <laughs> I have any idea how many snap-on ratchets I have? It's disgusting. I want to have that many snap I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't want to have, I have any. have one. I'm going to include my breaker bar. Two. Yeah, of course, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten snap-on ratchets and... Three Matco ratchets. All right, Chase, you have a, a job to do this week besides uh, editing, editing all the right everything. Thing. All right. You need to have this ratchet replaced. Which one? The. Yeah, noted. That ratchet. It, Future Chase, get a new ratchet. It uh, is automatically switching itself from reverse, from off to on. You know, that's I, I figured that was my whole problem this whole time. My ratchet was bad. So we're gonna put some Loctite on these. Yeah. All right, rear fairing, done. Rear ABS pickup thing, done. Rear brake line. Done. Rear brake line. Done. Rear brake light switch. Yeah. Done. Man, we haven't we haven't marked anything off yet. Torque wrench. Done. Fork. Torque. Done. Exhaust torque. Torque front sprocket. We did not do that because we didn't do the brakes yet. Ooh. Okay. Not yet. Cotter pin rear sprocket. Didn't do that yet either. Not rear sprocket. Rear axle. That's. Okay. Um. 
Okay, so everything that we have done was something that you said, hey, this needs to get done. So we've only got to mark off three things. There's a whole lot of shit left on that list. Well, before we could torque that front axle, we have to bleed the brake system so we could hold the brake so we could torque that nut. So much information you just said, so yes. Did that make any sense no. to you at all? You want me to repeat what I just said? Yes. So we have to fill and bleed the rear brake system. Got it. So we have an operating brake so we can hold the rear wheel steady so the chain holds the front sprocket so we can torque the front sprocket down this back. G okay. On board with All it. All those things need to happen before we can torque that one nut. Thanks for coming. Have a good day. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> okay. say made in the USA in dot four yes I feel like it has to be like this because dot four would be upside down if it was in a different spot okay so like if it was here does that say dot three now no but no. <laughs> shut up Brian <laughs> put it back how you had it <laughs> that was awesome I'm not gonna say that's what you get but that yeah that was awesome does it say dot three? This motherfucker right here, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, rear brake is all working. So we finally get to test the brake light. Everything is now fully installed and correct and good to go. So should we turn the bike on and Just, get this? Uh, make sure the kill switch is in the off position. All right, kill switch in the off position, check. And then go ahead and turn the key on. Okay, and go ahead and squeeze the front brake lever. All right. There it goes. Is that working every time you squeeze it? It seems like there's a lag. Okay, uh... Okay. It's working. working. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, rear wall. Now we're ready to test the pressure switch. Yep, here, we'll go to the back and we'll let you know, even though you can see it. Right? Yep. Initiated. 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 So cool. And if you do this with your hand and you can feel just when it starts making pressure, boop, light comes on. Really? So it's that, yeah. that dialed in. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to... It's just enough pressure, I guess, for your brakes to start working. Yeah. For that light to come on. Wait, so I smoldered the... Connections for the pressure switch. So the fact that that's working means that I smoldered correctly. Correct. <laughs> brake pedal switch? I assume that's what I meant. That's what we... Yeah, okay. Cotter pin in the rear sprocket needs to get... Rear axle, I mean, needs to get... Well, we, we can do that right now. So, I'm going to show you guys what Brian's doing with the cotter pin, but then I'm going to show you this thing I got from Amazon that's pretty clutch looking. Alright, so, uh... The reason why we're having to use a slightly smaller cotter pin, if you guys don't remember from, uh... Last episode? Episode 18, part one. <laughs> yeah, right. When we installed the uh, drive chain adjusters, the aftermarket ones that are pretty sweet. Um, they're a lot thicker than the factory ones, so this castle nut, but the nut's got to go on so far to expose the hole. So we had to remove 
oh. the axle nut washer because we have all of this extra stuff in its place so we could get the nut on far enough to put the cotter pin in, but the factory cotter pin is actually too thick because we didn't get the nut on deep enough because how thick all this other stuff is. So we got a slightly thinner washer. I believe the factory one is like a five and a half millimeter and that's the actual diameter. You mean cotter pin? Cotter pin, what did I call it? Axle? Washer. Uh, washer. Well, the uh, factory <laughs> the factory cotter pin is about uh, five or five and a half millimeters in diameter and I believe this one's four. It's a little bit thinner, but it's going to allow us to install our safety cotter pin so this cast will not can back off. Yeah. So uh, to get that cotter pin, again, I bought it on Amazon because that's just what I do, but uh, I found this little set that has all types of different stuff. So it comes in this little tackle box, oh God, tackle box looking thing. And it has this little piece of paper that tells you what everything is, but you can see it's got all these different cotter pins, those, and it has a different amount of washers and all this other kind of stuff. It's also pretty cheap. Uh, as usual, guys, I'm going to put links in the description for all the stuff that we, tools we use and uh, things that we put on the bike. All that stuff will be down below. They're kind of just in there. Good. There you go, Brian's professional cotter pin job. Now we can torque the front sprocket nut. Yeah, because now we have the, we can do the brake to let it not move and all that kind of stuff. Correct. For you guys not familiar, 108 foot pounds is an effing lot. Yeah, this torque wrench is awfully small for 108 foot pounds. Get it in prime position. Ready? Ready. There it is. Boom. You know when that thing clicks, huh? Yeah, you're not going to accidentally. You're, you're good with that, you don't have to. Yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna do my little clap clap. is done, torqued, uh, lock washer is peened over, counter shaft sprocket cover is back on, uh, coolant drain plug is back in, rear brake system is bled and ready to roll. Did you want to do the uh, the shock cover now? The loom thing, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah let's do it. All right, so guys, here's the thing. I'm just gonna be real with you. We've got this cable here that runs from the rear shock adjuster to the rear shock. Brian had the idea of putting a loom around it so that that cable can last longer, not rub on things. We got two types of looms. We got these thick ones and we got this kind of thinner, better looking one. The work we're about to do is very monotonous, time consuming, and probably really boring visually. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. I'm gonna show you the looms then I'll show you when it's done. Okay, bye. Loom, rear shock. Okay, LED flasher relay. This is the LED flasher relay. Wait, it's up there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Flasher relay replaced. Boom. So, let's do the license plate holder real quick and call that a day. Vortex fender eliminator. Oh wow, the whole rear of the bike is Vortex. Well, I guess not these. Okay, uh, for the fender eliminator kit guys, it's literally just this little bracket thing, nothing special. Wanted low profile, so that was the whole point. 
Looks like she don't fit, Chase. Are you kidding me? Nope. Whatever it is, it does nothing! Brian, why have so many times I ordered something that is that fits the ZX10, but doesn't fit the ZX10? Maybe you're not checking years. No, I'm like definitely checking years. Because this is the second time. This is same thing happened with the front brake reservoir. Or the front brake lever. Hmm. Okay, scratch that off the list for today. Now I'm uh a little curious about uh, how the whole headlight upper fairing mm -hmm. assembly goes on because I'm pretty sure you attach the windscreen and upper fairing onto the headlight before it goes on. In light of the uh, license plate holder not working, uh, I'll figure that out. It's not a big deal. It's literally bolt, so whatever. Uh, that will be how you have to wait to the reveal to see what license plate holder we're using. And uh, now we're gonna go to filling the radiator. Also, I didn't plan on letting you guys see any fairings, but I do wanna get the headlights on in this episode. So we're gonna install the screen, the front fairing, the front big headlight fairing, and the headlights all at one time. You sure you wanna do that? First engine ice. So what should I do with this giant bucket of coolant? Um, all right. gets connected to it, at least all the wire hangers. The upper fairing. It also includes the ram air duct, the purge valve for the charcoal canister. All that shit is all part of this one fairing assembly. So here's the headlights within the fairing, which yeah. means that the, the windscreen has got to go with it too. And there's a whole lot of stuff that goes with that upper fairing. Okay, uh, second thought. Brian and I were just looking at the uh, parts fish about how to get the headlight on because we want to do it right and everything. That process is going to take a very long time. So, we already planned on off camera putting all the fairings on and doing the reveal. So, part now of the reveal is going to be the headlights and the uh, uh, fender eliminator kit. Jesus, man, in light of uh, not putting that on today, but still wanting to give you guys information, here's a shot of Brian holding everything onto the bike as if it's gonna look like that. And that way you get to see the fairing. Check it out. And that's all you get. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of episode 18 of Wreck Bike Rebuild Season 2. Um, this is the last episode that you guys are going to get to see us do work on the bike. The next episode will be the reveal. After that, we are going to take the bike to the shop to get the final checks on it. And that is also the place we're going to get it dyno to see what the bike's looking like right now. We do have some work to do off camera, but... We're not about to record putting fairings on. But we do have some really awesome fairings from Monster Fairings. Uh, you saw the front one. Anyways, uh, if you guys want to see more stuff about this series, figure out how we fund it. Patreon.com is where all that is held at. Link in the description down below. If it wasn't for the awesome people that support this thing, we wouldn't be able to build this bike. We wouldn't be able to give it away to one of the people that helped support it. So uh, it's a pretty cool situation. Make sure to check it out if you're interested. Brian, high five. Nice job, man. Okay, and the next time you see the bike, it'll be finished, which is crazy. Me and Brian got a lot of work off camera to do. Thank you guys for getting to this point in the video. Make sure to hit the like button. It always uh, helps the video do better. And we'll see you in the reveal video. Later. Here, for the outro crew, we'll go over here. We'll just, we'll look at it from afar. What a beautiful... <gasps>